John here, guys, and today we're talking about the toothpick at long last kebabs, much anticipated micro frame for 65 millimeter. Whoop, carnage has finally hit the scene. We've all been waiting for it for so long. Uh, but miss, miss, he needs toothpicks. Could you help him give him some toothpicks? Thank you very much. Toothpicks. He needs some toothpicks. Can we just get him some toothpicks over here? Let me check him. Sorry about the toothpicks. And I can tell you, this is a must have. Now, one of my more popular recent videos and videos was was about this 3D printed micro frame that you can make out of PLA and I used this to tighten it over until this frame finally arrived but I can tell you that the way that this frame is laid out and the hardware that comes with it is going to make your build so much easier. This was always designed to be a temporary fix to just to see what you would feel like. But a couple of notes. There is no good way to have your screws, your screws thread into this PLA material. After a crash, they just become loose. I tried to use hot glue to get everything in place and it kind of worked, but it was just a pain, a messy, a messy workaround. So uh, just do yourself a favor. Now that it's out, just get the real thing. It's gonna be that much easier for you. Now the build is quite simple for these things. The only things you have to, now let's go to the pelvis. I'm using the toothpick frame. I am using the Crazy Bee F4 um, flight controller. I am using Hoppy Model 25 to 200 um, VTX. And of course the Crazy Bee version I'm using is the FR Sky, so the receiver is built in. This uh, 200 milliwatt makes my stack height two layers tall that you can see right there. And uh, then I'm using the Cadex EOS 2 4x3 version. I definitely recommend you get that, not the 16x9. Using the XT30 connector. I am, and you're, if you notice here, I didn't have to use the tiny little race wire that comes with these. And you're probably wondering what motors did you find that are long enough to direct plug and play. These are the Ishin trash can motors. Uh, the trash can motors. So those are direct plug and play. I am going to get the Amax 1103 per the recommended build. Uh, but until then, this can get me in the air. Um, the trash can motors, as Kebab you know, initially described, are very rattly. They rattle like an old metal trash can that Ashkin and Grouch is just thrashing around in. Who is uh, kicking my can? Oh, hi, Grouchy. So you're going to see some jello in this footage. And if you're wondering why, it's because of those motors. They're just not very smooth. Here is the trash can for size comparison. Here is the Tiny Hawk. And of course we have Hot Rod um, in there because this thing is quite a hot rod when you're flying it around. If you're gonna ride, Dano, ride in style. Look at the difference in 40 millimeter to 65 millimeter prop size. It is quite significant, but much like Hot Rod on the Transformers animated movie at the beginning, he is a bit unsteady. What? Um, so that's what you're gonna get with these trash can moves. But the nice thing is they are long enough to plug directly in. None of that race wire stuff is needed. So conversion, take the connectors off and swap those in. I made myself just a little makeshift roll cage out of a zip tie in case I get any hits. And when I'm using them on my camera, I do have the recommended versions, but I actually like this better. This is just the rubbery mount that comes with the Beta 75 Pro 2. It's the lower cam mount, which is 25 degrees, but it works in the same way as the recommended mount in that you can move up and down on this front screw to adjust your camera angle. So how does it fly? Aside from the rattliness from the motors, I've never flown anything, anything that has this much power to weight um, ratio. <laughs> Uh, it, it, you're going to see from some of the flight footage that as soon as I arm on the ground, it starts to jump up in the air. So much power. Um, the XT30, uh, this is the first time I ran the XT31. I was running this PLA version. I just had the regular JST board on there on 2S, but this XT30 does add a lot more power. I'm running these Tattoo 2S 300 milliamp packs. Um, that gives you not as much time, a minute and a half to two and a half minutes, depending on how hard you are pushing it. Um, it goes together nicely. You only have to do a couple of wires to solder this thing up. Pretty much just your BTX and your camera, and then of course your lead. Um, I didn't have a nice rubber band to use, so what I did was I got a zip tie on the bottom, and I tightened it to the correct length to have one of these things slide in there. 
and just tightened it fairly good, but not super tight. And then they just fit on there like that. And I just kind of tie up this little balance lead and it works just fine. But um, I do need a better solution to get some of those rubber bands. So you'll notice I am doing some power maneuvers, but not power loops specifically. It's not because this couldn't handle it, because I, but more because I was worried that doing too aggressive of a maneuver would cause this battery to slip through and then I would crash. Another thing to note is do get that eyeglass hardware set of hardware for your screws. You're gonna need that for your motor screws because at first I ran the stock screws in my excitement, didn't realize that this frame is, you know, it's thicker than, you know, the frame that's gonna be on this. So you're gonna need longer motor screws in order to secure them properly. And after I like, halfway through my first pack, uh, one of my motors just got loose and flew out. Luckily I was able to and uh, nothing actually broke. So very impressive. The super light weight of this thing, I'm gonna put the weight up on the screen, is so light that you can recover from any height. You can dive all the way to the ground, pull up 10 feet before you hit, and it's just gonna happen, no problem. It's very weird doing power maneuvers and in come, recovering from a dive at the flip of a switch. Now for this video of all these flight footage, uh, I left my throttle position on so that you can see how low of a throttle point it hovers and kind of cruises throttle and so just to give myself a little bit of extra control I'm using my racing model on my Tyrannus that has an 88% throttle limit um, so I'd suggest doing that too these tiny little motors are not gonna have anything beyond that anyway so I'm looking forward to increasing the power even more with the Amex but this is already just pure insanity I mean it is crazy the amount of power that this thing has and I actually did another build today um, and it's going to be coming up on the channel. It's a lot of new components, new motors, new stack, new everything. And I had about 40 minutes of daylight at the end of the day after getting everything done, needed to get done. And I flew two packs through that and I flew five packs through this because this, this is so fun. I, it is so fun. So if you haven't built one up, if you're wondering about the hype, do it, guys. You don't have to worry about crashing into someone. And you know, with these motors, yeah, you're not gonna hit the top speeds of a 4S two and a half inch that weighs 95 grams. That's true, but the power to weight ratio, the instant recovery is something that I've never felt in any quad. Even the largest motor freestyle or racing build that I've ever built, when you're going into a dive, it takes you know, a fraction of a second to recover. This is instantaneous. There is no free fall and the, the, that amount of power I've just never experienced before. So that is translating to some super fun, even with the wobbles because of these rattly trash can motors, it's still an immense pleasure to fly this thing around. So there'll be a follow up video when I get the rest of the components going, when I get the Amax motors and fly it for real, for real, but have a taste of this toothpick goodness right here. And, uh, <laughs> One extra note though about the toothpick frame is that these little posts are going to really protect these tiny little motors. Um, so the toothpick part of the actual frame serves a great protective purpose on your motors. These motors of this size, even the 1103s, are not going to be super strong, so you've got to be able to protect them. And that's one of the things that the Floss line has been doing since its inception. And it continues even with this tiny thing right here. So very impressive, very fun. Go and get one if you haven't. If you're flying a lot of these root class things, and I can tell you the trash can is very powerful and it can do things that a lot of the other root class can't do to us, but this is on another level. It's on any level than any other quad that I have. I have five inch on 6S, I have six inch on 6S, I have every size you've ever thought of, and there's nothing I've ever built that could fly like this as far as dives and recovery just pulling itself up instantly. Um, so very impressive, awesome job, uh, Kebab. Go to kebabfpv.com, his website, and check out all the notes that he's put. He's put it all for you. He put in the website the motor mapping that you would need if you're using this board. This is a recommended board. And so, because we are flipping it over, and, and so it saves you so much time when you're built up. You can just copy and paste that motor mapping diagram and boom, you're good to go. No figuring it around like you would have to on another build. So I had a couple of hours yesterday and I was able to get another you know, full racing build done and this thing in a single day. Uh, or really a single evening because I didn't start till like, you know, nine o'clock or something. So very, very cool. Fast build, fast fun. Go. If you're waiting, guys, if you're wondering, should I get one? Should I spend an extra 20 or 30 bucks, you know, versus something like this? Absolutely, you should. And there's no way you're going to fly this in your house, but for an outdoor unparalleled experience that you cannot get in any other package, regardless of the price, I mean, of course it's worth it.
Look how chipped up these props are. <laughs> and they're still, that's probably part of the job right there. So thanks guys, here's the footage.